Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another lecture on tool and die design. We are on module three, that is the design of stamping dies or design of sheet metal working dies. In the previous lectures in this module, we have discussed uh, some basics of sheet metal working. Then we discussed the design and analysis of sheet metal cutting operations. And in the previous lecture, we discussed uh, the design of sheet metal bending operations. And we focused primarily on the design of the dies, but we also performed some process analysis. In this lecture, we are focusing on sheet metal drawing dies. So we will focus on the design of the drawing dies as well as process analysis of sheet metal drawing. Uh, that is also called deep drawing. So at the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify the process parameters in deep drawing. So they include punch dia, die dia, drawing force, a blank holding force, clearance between punch and die, punch radius, die radius, etc. We should be able to calculate measures of drawing feasibility. They include drawing ratio, reduction, and thickness to diameter ratio. And you should be able to calculate starting blank size. So just like bending operations, we need to calculate accurate size of the blank before the drawing operation is to be performed. You should be able to calculate number of drawing operations required in the case of redrawing or where more than one drawing operations are to be performed. You should be able to calculate drawing force the force that is required to perform the drawing operation as well as blank holder force. Then we will discuss the ironing operation that is one of the secondary operations that is uh, that, that can be performed after a deep drawing operation. Then we will discuss the uh, process to make can. So that is an application of deep drawing process. And finally, you should be able to understand some common drawing defects. So we are discussing sheet metal working processes. We have discussed shearing or cutting processes. We have discussed bending, bending processes. And now we are focusing on deep or cup drawing. So first we will discuss some basics of sheet metal drawing that is also called deep drawing. So this is one of the shaping or forming processes in sheet metal working. So we have discussed one example of forming processes in sheet metal working. They are the bending processes. And now we are going to focus on uh, the drying processes. So deep drying is sheet metal forming to make cup shaped or box shaped or other complex curved hollow shaped products. As, as you will notice that, uh, these products are mostly either shallow products or deep products, but they are hollow from inside. Sheet metal blank is positioned over the die cavity and then punch pushes metal into the die opening. So the blanking is actually the primary process for sheet metal drawing or deep drawing. Products of deep drawing include beverage cans, that is the classical example of deep drawn product, ammunition shells, automobile body panels, sinks, cooking pots, etc. Uh, this process is called sheet metal drawing or deep drawing, especially to distinguish it from wire and bar drawing. And they are also the example of deformation processes, but uh, although they have the same name, the drawing operations, but they are very different from sheet metal drawing or deep drawing. There are some examples of deep drawn parts. You could see that this part is drawn up to certain depth. Uh, same is true about this part as well as this one. Some of them are hollow from um, both sides, I mean, they don't have bottom, but some of them do have a base or bottom. So again, some examples. So you could see that 
in all cases, the part is drawn. So this is the drawn portion of the part. So this is the portion of the blank that is drawn into the die. So a couple of things that you might notice in all these parts. One is, of course, they are hollow from inside. And the second thing in the part shown on the slide are, uh, is that they are symmetric. So these parts are symmetric about certain axes. So this part is symmetric about this axis. This part is symmetric about certain axis like this. This part is also symmetric. So uh, these parts are symmetric about certain vertical axis. Uh, but that is not necessarily in all cases, but these are the simplest examples, the simplest parts that we can make using deep drawing. And in this case, all these are symmetric about certain vertical axis. Uh, but of course, we can make more complex parts than these. In this uh, series of lectures on deep drawing, we will primarily focus on simple shapes like these. So we will be having a flat blank that will be drawn into simple shapes like these, the shapes that have a certain height and certain diameter. Or at some time, we might be looking for slightly more complex shape like this one, that apart from a height also has a flange or a collar. So once you are able to understand the drawing process for these simple shapes, it is easy to extend the concepts to more complex shapes. And of course, we can make more complex shapes like the ones shown on this slide. So you could have certain parts of the cars and automobiles, uh, the iron, the fuel tank of the motorcycle, or similarly, the fuel tank of, of car can be made using deep drying process, the sinks, pores, and utensils. So these are just few of many examples of the parts that can be made using deep drawn, uh, using deep drawing process. And these parts mentioned on this slide are relatively more complex than the ones on the previous slide. So this uh, figure will help us to understand some important process parameter in deep drawing process for a simple shape like this, as I mentioned, that we will primarily focus on this simple shape, a plain shell that is drawn uh, using a starting flat circular blank. And this a shell will have a certain diameter and certain height. So important process parameters are the diameter of the punch. So that will determine the inner diameter of the shell. And then there is, of course, a certain diameter of the die. That will determine the outer diameter of this shell, this diameter. Then we are having a certain radius at the bottom of the punch, this radius. Uh, there is uh, actually needed to be a certain radius in order to avoid tearing of the blank. And similarly, we need to have a certain radius uh, for the die as well. So these two radii are important. So, so far we have seen two diameters, the diameter of the punch, the diameter of the die the radius on the punch and radius on the die. So this radius on the punch will determine the inner radius of the shell and this radius on the die will determine the outer radius at the bottom of the shell. Then of course, just like bending, we need to have a certain um, diameter of the blank and it needs to be accurately calculated so that once the part is drawn into the die, we get the uh, required uh, shape. For the parts that have some collar or flange, generally a scantry operation is performed that is called the trimming operation to get the desired uh, size of this flange uh, or collar. Just like we saw in the case of cutting operations, the clearance between punch and die is, uh, is also very critical and it needs to be accurately calculated. For simple operations, like the ones to make shapes like uh, this cup or shell, this clearance is slightly greater than the thickness of the starting blank. 
An important consideration in sheet metal drying operations is uh, this blank holder force. We need to hold the blank in position before the drying operation starts. So first this blank holder, hold the blank uh, into position. So uh, this is of course the blank. And once the blank holder has held the blank into position, then uh, the drying punch actually descends and pushes the blank into the die. So this blank holder actually controls the flow of the blank into the die. So this flow is controlled by this blank holder. So this blank holding force should not be too high so that tearing may occur and it should not be too low so that the blank drops into the die. So this needs to have an optimum value and this value of the blank holder force is of course smaller uh, than the force that is used for the uh, drawing operation. So we will focus on uh, these process parameters as we will move on, we will see how we can calculate uh, the diameter of the starting blank, what should be the value of the radius on the punch as well as radius on the die. And uh, we will see that uh, uh, how we can calculate the, uh, this drying force as well as the blank holder force. So all these parameters, the starting blank diameter, the radius of the punch, radius of the die, the clearance between punch and die, blank holder force and drying force will be discussed in detail as we move on. So we have the starting blank like this that is placed onto the die. First the blank holder holds the blank into position. After that the punch descends and pushes the blank into the die and as the punch pushes the blank into the die this blank holder actually controls the flow of the blank into the die and it keeps on holding the blank as the uh, operation continues and until the part is drawn into the die. So same process can be explained with the help of this figure, so, uh, figure that we have a blank that has a certain diameter and this is the portion of the blank where the punch first contacts the blank, uh, this circle one. So that actually will make the bottom of the shell. So you could see here that punch contacts this circle one and then pushes the blank into the die and once again you should notice that this blank holder actually controls the flow of the blank into the die. Then this metal in the second ring as shown here, this ring flows uh, into the die. I'm emphasizing the word flow because uh, here the metal is being deformed and this flat circular blank is being converted into, in, uh, in this case, into two portion of the part. So this uh, circle one will make the bottom of the shell and the rest of the circles or the rings you can say will uh, make the walls of the shell. So uh, for example, ring two will make the bottom portion of the, of the wall and ring three will make upper portion and so on. And the outermost uh, ring will make the upper part of the shell. So after the second ring, the third ring flows into the die, then the fourth one and so on. And ultimately we, we get uh, the shape like this. So the flow of the blank into the die is just like uh, a waterfall. And so eventually with the help of control of the flow of the metal, with the help of this blank holder, this blank is drawn into the die and we get the desired shape. In the following segments, we will discuss some important parameter related to the process design and the die design in sheet metal working. Thank you very much.